Hey folks, Nathan here again, aka Ubic Videos. Uh, this next tutorial is actually not part of the series, but I still wanted to do it because there's been some people having trouble on the forums and inside of Slack with importing their wallets. Uh, there's one way that you may have downloaded your wallet that I didn't really account for, and I assumed that my Ether wallet would work through it and still give you the ability to download the encrypted wallet but once the wallet has been unencrypted or if you download the unencrypted private key um, unfortunately there does not appear to be a way to re-encrypt that wallet with a passphrase and that's what leads to this issue uh, so you may not remember if you downloaded your wallet in encrypted format or not but we'll get into that and uh, i should hopefully be able to uh, get rid of these last couple of errors that some folks are having with their wallet imports. So let's dig in. For this one, you actually don't want to have the Gubic node running because we have to feed it command line parameters. Uh, and if the node is running, it's not going to be able to connect to the uh, the block database, basically. And so the, the commands will fail. So um, I guess to, sh to start, I'll show you what, like what what you might get on screen if you accidentally do that. So it's gonna tell me to re-encrypt this and I'll go over these commands, don't don't worry. Oh, I can't do that one because the account already exists. Okay, let me let me do it the other way that I did it here a second ago then. Uh ba -ba -ba. No, that's not it. Oh, that's right. So if you get the command wrong and you accidentally type Gubic Windows, you know, the name of the, the Gubic executable, and then just import, and then like a file name, you'll see the process cannot access the file because it is being in, it used by another process. Uh, that's what I was talking about. So this is actually the wrong command. We're going to go over the right one. But if you see this error, it's because you've typed the command incorrectly. So um, anyway, I will show you guys if you import your wallet how this is going to look. So if you do a wallet import from the CoinSwap address website on this view wallet info tab, select key store JSON file, your, your wallet should be in a file similar to this right here. I'm sorry, not like that. Let me go back to downloads. Should be in a file something like this. If it says unencrypted.json at the end, that means that you are going to run into this issue and you are going to need to follow this tutorial. Uh, it may not always say that. Obviously, you could have renamed the file. Um, maybe there's a different way you could have downloaded it from the website where it wouldn't say that. So I, I'm not going to guarantee that it's always going to say unencrypted.json, but it's a good indicator that you're going to need to follow this tutorial. So if we open this here from the MyEther website, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't ask me for a password here. If you have the unencrypted wallet, it will not show you a passphrase here. So if you do not see an enter a passphrase box right here, that means you're also going to want to follow this tutorial. So if you hit unlock, you'll now see that there, there's only an option to print your paper wallet or download an unencrypted JSON file. There's no way to re-encrypt this wallet. If we could re-encrypt it, then you could follow my original tutorial video that I did for importing, um, and it would have been a little bit easier, but don't worry, we're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. So I've already got my file downloaded, but if you don't have it, uh, or if you just had the raw key or whatever, I don't know, go ahead and hit download here. Uh, it will give you a file like this. Like I said, it'll have unencrypted.json at the end. Let me delete this file here. Uh, so what you want to do to in, to import this wallet is open up this unencrypted.json file. There's going to be a few different strings of data in here. The one that we are interested in, though, is this one that starts with priv key, stands for private key. Uh, this is a string that you should not share with anybody. Um, I'm only showing it to you because this is a test wallet. I'm never going to populate this wallet with funds, so you guys can have it. Do whatever you want with it. Um, what you want to do is copy the portion of this that's in between the double quotes. So you'll see I've just highlighted in between the double quotes, but I'm not actually grabbing those. And then either right click and choose copy or hit control plus C on your keyboard. Once we have that copied, we're going to make a new text file. 
I would recommend calling it something like delete me.txt. That way you know that it should be deleted afterwards. Because again, both of these files have your unencrypted private key in them. So if anybody gets a hold of those files, they can import your account and drain your funds. So I like to name stuff delete me when I, I know I want to delete it because if I ever see a file like that, I, I kill it right away. So now that we've got our delete me.txt file, whoops, didn't save it. There we go. All right, so now that we've got our delete me.txt file, we want to, like I said, kill the uh, kill the node, and then you're gonna open a command prompt inside of the directory uh, that you've got your wallet file in. I, I recommend putting that wallet file alongside the Gubic executable because it'll make this process easier. Um, so what we do is just hold down Shift, right click, choose Open Command Window here. That pre-opens the command window to the working directory of uh, wherever we did that right click operation from. So from here, all we have to do is start typing the name of the Gubic executable and then press tab, hit space, and type account space import. And now we just need to feed it the path to the file that we just created, the delete me.txt. Now, since we're already in the working directory that has both the executable and our text file, we can simply start typing delete me and then hit tab and it'll auto complete for us. If delete me were in a different directory, you would have to specify the full path to that file. So I'll show you guys that after I finish the easy way to do it, just in case you wanted to keep it in separate locations or had to. Uh, so now this is it, just hit enter. Uh, it's gonna tell you that it's gonna be locked with a password and it's gonna ask you to type in a password twice. So go ahead and do that. Make sure they match, which I accidentally fat fingered the second one. Uh, oh, I'm my bad. It says the account already exists. Uh, so hold on one second. Let me delete that. App data. Dig into here. Delete that. And then let's go back and hit up arrow, which will give us our command back. And then hit enter. Retype the password yet again. And give it a second. And then it spits out the address. And one thing I recommend double checking is if you downloaded the file from my Ether wallet or from uh, the CoinSwap website, uh, it will it should have the address number at the beginning of it. So double check the last few characters: one seventeen zero F nine, one seventeen zero F nine. So this is what it said the address was for that private key that we just imported. I just recommend making sure that they match up, even though they should. Uh, so now let me show you the slightly harder way to do it uh, in case you put those in different directories after I told you not to. Um, so let me go back in here and delete that key one more time and then come back in here and let me move this to like C temp. So, all right, so now what we have to do is go back here to downloads since our executable is in the downloads directory and our current working directory is the downloads directory we can just start typing gubic hit tab and it'll autocomplete and then we add the same command account import but now we have to give it the full path for our new file um, a little trick to that is if you go where the file is resting you can copy the first bit of the path out of the, the just the explorer bar right here and then paste that into your command uh, and then just finish it off with another slash and the rest of the name of the file. If you have spaces in your path anywhere, like let's say this is temp slash ubic or something like that, you would have to quote this path. So I would recommend just as a precaution double quoting that path just like I did here and that'll give you the best chance of it completing and then we can hit enter it again asks us for a password we type it and it spits out the address where you can verify with the downloaded file uh, to make sure that it is matching 
so that's pretty much it. That will uh, that that should clear up the last couple of errors that folks have had with doing imports. Uh, I still encourage you if you're having issues with it, please join our Slack. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. Um, it's it's much easier to give people help on Slack than it is on Bitcoin Talk or some of the other platforms because you know it, it's hard to get a back and forth conversation going on Bitcoin Talk. Uh, plus. We can take it to direct messages in Slack and keep, uh, you know, all of your financial type data private. Uh, so, yeah, definitely recommend joining Slack if you're still having import issues because it's probably something a little bit more obscure than what we've been running into so far. And it, it may take a little bit more digging to figure out. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope this one helped out a few folks. If it didn't, please let me know. If it did, also let me know. I'd like to hear the feedback and uh, stick around for some more tutorials. Take it easy.